There's a lot of tradition in these boxes, a tradition of technological excellence that spans more than 50 years. It began at a time when America relied on Packard Bell radios for information and entertainment. Then, Packard Bell pioneered television sets and stereophonic sound. And Packard Bell engineers helped launch America's space effort. Today, Packard Bell computer systems like yours are at work in industry, government, and in homes across the nation. Linking the system together is easy, once you know what each component is. Let's start with the very basics. The computer system you've purchased is part of the new Packard Bell 386X series. It features a highly integrated motherboard with the Intel 80386SX microprocessing chip for superior performance. Your 386X computer comes standard with a 5 and a quarter inch 1.2 megabyte floppy disk drive. Your system may also have a three and a half inch 1.44 megabyte floppy disk drive. There is also an internal hard disk drive for the permanent storage of information and data. This light, marked HDD, will indicate when the hard drive is in use. Your 386X computer is equipped to run at two speeds. In the slow speed, the computer will operate at eight megahertz. In the fast speed or turbo mode, the computer will operate at 16 megahertz. This switch, marked turbo, will allow you to go back and forth between the two speeds. The light will indicate when you are in the turbo mode. When you turn the system on, it will automatically switch to the turbo 16 megahertz speed. Now let's turn the system around. As you look at the back of the system, you will see that all of the ports are clearly identified. First, there's the keyboard port, marked KBD. Next to it, you will see the dedicated mouse port for a PS2 style mouse. If you purchase a mouse with a PS2 connector, it will plug in here. Two serial ports are built in for use with a modem, mouse, printer, or other accessory which requires the use of a serial port. The parallel port is where you would normally plug in a standard Centronics parallel printer data cable. The video port is here. This is where you will plug in your monitor cable. You will also notice three open expansion slots available for use with game ports, an internal modem, or any special purpose expansion board. Now, you're ready to connect the system together. First, plug the keyboard into the keyboard port. Next, plug your monitor cable in here. If you have a monochrome, CGA, or EGA monitor, you will use the nine pin connector. If you have purchased a VGA monitor with your system, then you will use the 15 pin connector here. Be sure to tighten the screws on the connector. The power cord for the monitor can plug into any standard wall outlet. It is recommended, however, that you use a power strip with a built-in surge protector. This will help protect your system from any voltage spikes or surges which could occur. The final connection is simple. Just plug one end of the main computer power cord into the back of the computer here, and the other end into the power strip with the monitor. After making sure that all of the connections are firmly seated, you're ready to turn the system on. These indicator lights show you the status of your system. As you turn on the computer, you will see the hard disk light come on as the computer reads the drive. Now, turn on the monitor. In a few seconds, it will begin to glow. As your system warms up, it checks to see if all of the components are working correctly. If your computer indicates a hard disk boot failure, it means that your hard drive has lost its format. You will need to refer to your MS-DOS 4.01 user's guide to reload the operating system software onto the hard drive. Read the manual carefully, and you will be able to reload all of the necessary information into your system. If the computer does not indicate a hard disk failure, the system will automatically go into the MS-DOS 4.01 menu shell. This means that the system is fine and ready to go to work. The first command you may want to attempt is to change the color of the screen. Use the cursor arrows to move down to Change Colors and press the Enter key. Now you can go through the menu to pick any of the four color options for your screen. Next, 
you will want to be able to format any new diskettes which you may purchase. To do this, you will need to load the format command onto the hard drive. First, use the cursor keys to highlight the DOS utilities, then press the Enter key. Now, cursor down to the Format option and press the Enter key. You can now exit the menu shell by pressing the F3 key at the top of your keyboard. Here, you will see the DOS prompt. Now, insert the Install Diskette into Drive A. Type the following, copy, space, A, colon, format, dot, C-O-M, and press the Enter key. The system will now inform you when the file has been copied to the hard disk drive. To return to the menu shell, type DOS shell and press the Enter key. You will now be back at the main menu. Now, cursor down to the DOS utilities and press the Enter key. Next, cursor to the Format option and press the Enter key. If you are formatting a 1.2 megabyte high-density floppy disk in the A drive, you will simply press the Enter key. The system will then instruct you to insert the new diskette into the A drive and to press the Enter key when ready. If, however, you are formatting a 360K double-density floppy disk in the A drive, you must also add the switch forward slash 4 and then press the Enter key. When formatting a 720K double-density floppy disk in the B drive, you must also add the switch forward slash N colon 9 space forward slash T colon 80. If you are formatting a 1.44 megabyte high-density floppy disk in the B drive, you can simply press the Enter key after designating the target as the B drive. Upon completion of the format procedure, the system will give you the option of entering a volume label for your new diskette. Then you will have the option of formatting another diskette or leaving the format procedure. The next command will involve duplicating a diskette. This command is called a disk copy. This command can only be performed when both the source and the target diskettes are of the same capacity. For example, a 360K diskette can only be disk copied to another 360K diskette. To perform a disk copy, you use the cursor keys to highlight the disk copy command and press the Enter key. If you are disk copying to A drive, press Enter again. If you are disk copying to B drive, type B colon and press the Enter key. Note that in the dialog box, you will have the option for using the help screen by pressing the F1 key. This help lesson is available for all of the different functions performed through the DOS shell. To gain access to the information on the C or D drive, you will need to enter the file system. To do so, use the cursor to highlight File System and press Enter. You will now see a complete list of all files found in the C drive. The DOS Quick Reference Guide provided with your computer will assist you in setting up your computer learning the MS-DOS operating system, and accessing the different programs you will use with your computer. Be sure to read through the MS-DOS User's Guide to gain a complete understanding of your computer's operating system. It will allow you to use your new Packard Bell computer with confidence and skill. And that will open up a whole new world.